Chapter 5. Wiggloff, Eric, and Agnes rushed along the castle hallways until they came to a spiraling stone staircase. They ran up the steps, two at a time. When they reached the top of the east tower, they were panting for breath. Several boys stood at the window, pulling on a rope. Agnes and Eric joined them. Wiggloff, too, began to pull. What are we raising? he asked. Tis Sir Mort, Agnes replied, our teacher. He has a hard time walking upstairs. In a moment, Wiglof saw why. A helmeted head appeared at the window. The boys reached out to pull their teacher in, and Sir Mort crashed into the classroom floor wearing a full suit of armor. The boys helped him to his feet. Stalking a fire breather is no easy matter, lads, the old knight began lecturing as he lurched and clattered to the front of the room. Dragons can hear you coming from miles away, especially if you have on armor. Clank's something awful. Sir, Eric called, what about a dragon's sense of smell? Oh, they smell all right, Sir Mort nodded thoughtfully. Like old cheese, most of them. But I slew a dragon once that smelled exactly like my Red Bull socks when I wear them too long and the mold sets in. Eric tried again. I meant, can a dragon smell a dragon hunter? Ah, good question, Sir Mort explained. That's how you learn, lads, by asking questions. He looked around the room. Are there any more questions? A tall, scared-looking boy raised his hand. How close dare we stalk a dragon without danger? He asked in a shaky voice. That, Agnes whispered to Wigloff, is Torblad the Terrible. How close, Sir, Mo Sir Mort exclaimed. An excellent question. Excellent. You will go far, lad. Next question. Eric's hand shot up again. He certainly is eager, Wigloff thought. Yesterday you said we must stalk different dragons in different ways, Eric said. Can you give us an example? Certainly I can, Sir Mort nodded, smiling. Easy as pie. Eric and the rest of the class waited, but Sir Mort only kept nodding and smiling. Sir, Eric said at last, will you show us what you mean? Good idea, the old knight jangled into the center of the room. Take cave-dwelling dragons. They have excellent hearing, Sir Mort explained, so they must be approached on the sly. I use what I call the sliding glide. I stand sideways to the cave like this. Sir Mort turned sideways to the class, and I slide my right foot out like this. Sir Mort slid his right foot out. Unfortunately, the old stone floors of the castle were far smoother than the ground outside a dragon's cave. Sir Mort's boot kept sliding and sliding and sliding until the old knight clanked to the floor in a perfect split. His visor slammed down over his face. Hoist me up, lads, Sir Mort cried in a muffled voice. Eric and two other boys gripped their teacher under the arms and pulled him up. Ah, that's better. Sir Mort pushed his visor back up. Slippery devils, these boots. Reminds me of the time I stalked the dragon Fifner. Have I showed you the wound Fifner gave me? Nasty wound it is. Sir Mort bent down. He began struggling to pull off the left boot of his armor. In the distance, a bell rang. Agnes spoke up. Sir Mort, class is over. Devilish tight, this boot, Sir Mort grumbled. Sir, we must go to slaying class now. Agnes continued. Coach Plungett gets vexed if we are late. And go then, lads, go, Mort said. My wound will wait. Got it the year of the grasshopper plague. No, the year before. Couldn't have walked to Canstalope, not with this wound. No, it must have been. Quietly, Wiglaw followed Agnes and Eric and the other future dragon slayers down the spiral st staircase. He was amazed at how much he had learned of dragon stalking in one short morning. Step it up, lads, Co Pu Coach Plugnet called as class ran out into the castle yard. The large man's long brown page boy style hair blew gently in the breeze. Ten laps around the castle, he ordered. Can't kill a dragon if you're not in shape. By lap three, Eric was way ahead of the others. Wigloff was way behind. He began to worry that slopping pigs and washing dishes had not prepared him well for dragon slaying. But after the laps, the coach ordered the boys to take a deep breath and hold it in for a count of 50. If a dragon spews out poison, he told them, the longer you can hold your breath, the better. Ready? And one, two, three. Wigloff smiled as he held his breath. Living in the smelly hovel with his unwashed family had given him plenty of practice at this skill. He alone made it to the count of 50. Good work, Coach Plugnet told him. Now before we start slaying, why don't you give the DSA cheer for our new boy? Belt it out now, boys. At once, the whole class began shouting at the top of their lungs, Rudy Toot, Rudy Toot Ho, Rudy Toot Hey, we are the boys from DSA. We slay dragons, yes we do, big ones, bony ones, fat ones too. We slay dragons, young and old. We slay dragons, grab their gold. Yay, yay, for good old DSA, hey. Hey, 
Coach clapped at the end of the cheer. All right, now line up in the front of the old blog net. Quickly, lads, go on. Wigloff and the others lined up in front of a large dragon. It wasn't a real dragon, of course. Old Blogget was only a wooden one covered with cloth and stuffed with straw. Slaying is the most important class here at DSA, Coach told the boys. You can find a dragon, you can stalk a dragon, but if you cannot slay a dragon, you cannot get a horde. Today we shall practice slaying method number seven, the throat thrust. Aim here. Coach Plugnet pointed the tip of his sword just under Old Blognot's chin where a target had been painted. Not many scales in that spot. Watch me now. Coach Plugnet faced the false dragon. He drew his weapon, galloped a few steps, and with a toss of his brown page boy, thrust his sword deep into the dragon's neck. Wigloff cringed. He knew that no blood would spill out from this dragon. Still, his stomach did flip-flops. Wigloff watched and growing Wigloff watched with growing dread as each boy took a turn stabbing the practice dragon. When his turn came, he drew sure kill, galloped towards the dragon, and stopped. Go on, boy, Coach Plugnet urged him. Wigloff backed up. He gripped sure kill more tightly. He stared at the target on the dragon's throat. He galloped forward again and stopped. Blazing King Ken's britches, Coach cried. Aim here, he pointed at the target. Wigloff backed up once more. He swallowed. If he could not plunge his sword into this dummy dragon, what hope did he have of slaying a real one? Wigloff took a step towards old Blognut, then another and another. I cannot watch, Coach Plugnet moaned. He turned away in disgust, but Wigloff kept going. Faster and faster he came, and at the last minute he closed his eyes. Hiya! He thrust Shirt Kill up towards the dragon's chin, but somehow Wigloff missed. He went flying past the practice dragon and landed on a bale of straw. His eyes popped open. Around him, boys were hooting and pointing. Wigloff glanced at Shirkill. His heart nearly stopped. He had missed the practice dragon, but he had speared some small, brown, furry creature. There it was, stuck on the end of his sword. Why is everyone laughing, Wigloff wondered, when I have so cruelly killed a... Uh, I'll take that, growled the coach. Wigloff looked up to see a very bald coach plugment scratching the hairy thing from the end of Shirkill and angrily set it on his head. Only then did Wigloff understand what the creature had... What creature he had murdered. Coach Pigloff's old brown page boy wig.